Christmas is fast approaching when Eve Mary loses her job and her boyfriend on the same day. She needs a miracle to put her life back on track. When her best friend sees an advert for a chef in the Scottish Highlands, she exaggerates Eve's experience. With nothing to lose, Eve jumps on the train to Scotland. However, she soon realizes cooking in a castle is demanding, especially when the chef has lied on her CV. With a brooding Scotsman to contend with, this Christmas seems like it's going to be one to forget. Oh, hello everyone. Didn't notice you there. I set up the tripod and camera, but didn't notice you there. <laughs> Welcome, once again, to The Heir's Lair. I'm your host, Jonathan Taylor. Today's video will, as the title already uh, gave away, be a, another review of an uh, arc. And this time I'm reviewing one that is more seasonally appropriate. Namely, A Merry Christmas at the Castle by Elizabeth Windsor. This is by no means the first uh, Elizabeth Windsor book I've uh, read and reviewed. It's not even the first christmas theme book, book of hers that I've uh, reviewed. Uh, and it will definitely not be the last. The TLDW for this review is... This is fairly typical as far as uh, Elizabeth Holland uh, romances go. So if you're already familiar with her, if you're familiar with and interested in her, uh, her composition and her aesthetics, then most likely you will like this book as well. And if you're looking for uh, a romance author you've uh, never heard of before, well then this book is as good as, as good a place as any to start uh, reading through uh, Elizabeth's bibliography. That being said, I'll, uh, I'll get into the uh, actual book. Its story follows Eve Mary, a chef who, despite having, uh, you know, having, having had, a, who despite having an official training as a chef and going to culinary school, she still needed to, uh, she still needed to uh, have a lie sneak into her CV for her to find a job as a chef. <clears throat> uh, once she is once she is, is at her job and actually you know and doing what what she is uh, what she is paid to do, she finds that working as a chef is made uh, more difficult, more complicated, as a chef's work always is, by the relationships with her clients, both the ones that are outright hostile and the ones that are the exact opposite. Without going too much into uh, details and spoilers. Uh, what can I say makes this book uh, distinctive? Well, if I am to be fair, there are uh, there are quite a few things. Um, first of all, I really appreciate that uh, Elizabeth has actually uh, done the research and actually delves a little bit into uh, what working as a chef uh, is actually like. This is still a romanticized portrayal, so don't expect any aspects of the grind to be uh, accurately portrayed. But she does explore the uh, struggles of uh, working at a of working as a chef, the logistics of acquiring ingredients, um, how to you know how to best prepare them in order to emphasize uh, certain you know certain flavors over others, uh, how to ne how to never let whatever you uh, prepare go to waste, uh, how to you know how to uh, create a menu or a meal plan, how to adapt said meal plan. Get, um, based on the requirements of your uh, customers, etc, etc. I do appreciate the fact that she uh, that she goes that she goes on a that she goes on this uh, a relatively rare avenue of, of having the the main couple bond over their shared interest in the uh, culinary arts. And I have to say the way their uh, labors are described is very interesting and very enticing. This is really where uh, this is really where Elizabeth has sunk most of her uh, description superpower when it comes to, you know, when it comes to this book. And as an, as an amateur cook, I have to say that the, the recipes that this book describes uh, run the gamut from would that actually work to whoa, that actually sounds very cool. With most of the recipes described being clustered around the upper half of this, uh, uh, of this scale. Uh, be warned though, if you if you have an eating disorder or an ED, you might be turned away by the uh, you know by the overly luxurious uh, descriptions of the food. 
And unfortunately, there are some parts of this book that will turn you away from it, even if you, uh, even if you don't have any D. Uh, I'll. Uh, uh, there are some pro there are some problems, but uh, they all stem from uh, one one central issue, one central issue that has come up previously in uh, in uh, Elizabeth's work, and it is and it is the one thing I will address uh, most directly. Namely, Elizabeth does not know how to write class. Uh, when she tries to establish that her uh, love interest is uh, her love interest, despite being uh, <laughs> despite being a privately educated offspring of uh, Scottish nobility, is still is you know still humble, hardworking, down to earth. When she tries to establish that, she uh, she uh, establishes that he started from the bottom in the culinary arts by working at McDonald's in order to pay his way for culinary school. That is facepalm inducing for several reasons, which I will now explore in great detail. Uh, one, unless his parents pay for his housing, and maybe even his utilities and sustenance, that is financially impossible. Especially, <laughs> that would have been financially impossible, you know, during and after the, uh, uh, the Thatcher Premiership, but it would have been especially so, uh, you know, post post two thousand and eight. Like there's there's simply the money simply isn't there. Like there there is there is no way he could have you know he really could have uh, afforded it as as it stands. Second of all, am I really to believe that this guy, Scottish nobility, couldn't pay for culinary school out of pocket? The book tries to justify that by saying that he is the second born and doesn't really have the same uh, and has to uh, and has to work in order to get the same level of uh, respect and attention from his parents that his older brother would have received. But he is still a member of a noble house. He still has to project a certain level of authority and control and respectability. And he would have his own funds in order to, you know, actually do that. So yeah, the, I totally don't believe that he had to work at McDonald's to make ends meet. Thirdly, Elizabeth somehow wants her, wants her readers to simultaneously believe that uh, his parents didn't want him going to culinary school because it would be beneath their expectations, but they were simultaneously okay with him working at McDonald's because that somehow isn't beneath their expectations. No, you can't have it both ways, Liz. <laughs> you just can't. Like th this does not this does not work, okay? If they're if they're gonna hate one thing, they're gonna hate the other thing as well. It is it would be it would have been much more plausible to say that to say that during his gap year he discovered an you know he discovered an interest in cooking, and then did and then did uh, uh, one or more apprenticeships at various uh, at, you know various high end restaurants up until he gained uh, where he where he actually managed to gain his uh, culinary skills. That, and that is both more plausible and would still be in keeping with trying to make him grounded and relatable. I appreciate that uh, Elizabeth at least tries to explore some more complex uh, topics about uh, class distinctions and, uh, and you know, uh, public image, but as I think I've been able to demonstrate, she does so in very superficial ways. And don't get me wrong, this does not make her a bad offer. And in fact, if you were to uh, look at the way she is received, you will very likely find that she that, that she has uh, found her niche, and there are plenty of people who have a, who have a very high opinion of her. It it just so happens that her one blind spot happens to be my pet peeve. Anyway, even if I were to ignore the uh, pet peeve. This book is still, this book is still uh, not particularly impressive, and a lot of the problems are are unfortunately still tied into the uh, unfortunately still tied into the love interest, because he does because he is he there isn't really a lot uh, there isn't really a lot to him even though he is he, even though he is the counterpoint to the protagonist and there, and part of this uh, part of this romance is main couple. Uh, Elizabeth doesn't really bother much with uh, giving him uh, many distinctive characteristics. He's just kind of 
generically nice and respectful, not really given a lot of depth. It is, uh, it is mentioned that he uh, owns and runs a Michelin star restaurant, but the story never specifies, firstly, whether or not he has a specialty dish, and secondly, what kind of cuisine his, uh, you know, his, uh, uh, his, his restaurant serves. And really, that is, those are a lot of, uh, and those are a lot of avenues for hidden depth that she either, that she has either ignored or, or was, in, or was incapable of, uh, or incapable of translating. I don't, I don't really, I don't really see, I, 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 I get it, he is interested in, uh, is interested in, in cooking, but I don't really get what part of, uh, what part of cooking, or what aspect of this quite substantial field, quite broad field, um, really, you know, really, uh, draws him, really speaks to him. And unfortunately, that superficial treatment also is also mirrored in, in the way the uh, uh, in the way the romantic plot of this uh, uh, of this romance gets uh, um, uh, gets carried out. It's basically just a will they won't they that is fueled by a jealous third party. So it's it's very unimpressive in that regard. The worst part about this, the worst part, is that. Now that I've gone through this book, I still, I still don't know what draws the, uh, what draws Eve to her love interest and her love interest to Eve. Like, it, it is mentioned that they both have a uh, common interest in cooking, but then again, so, so would everyone uh, these people, you know, these people have, uh, uh, have worked with. So. Why is it, so why is it that they're not? They haven't been in any way interested in uh, in anyone in anyone else that they've worked with. What is so what is so specific about what is so specific to each of them about uh, in, you know about uh, the uh, about the other part of this couple? The the book doesn't specify, and it and it really could have and it really could have at least uh, you know tried to specify that. Maybe by give maybe by <laughs> Maybe by giving the love interest a little bit more depth with regards to uh, what what you know what uh, what cuisine he chose to specialize in, and what is it about that cuisine that he that he particularly finds interesting, and maybe and maybe for could could perhaps find uh, could perhaps find some common ground. Maybe they'd be interested in the same cuisine for different reasons. Who knows? But no, it's basically just uh, it's basically just I'm just drawn to you, I, and I don't know why. It's lust. It's it's just that. Let's be honest. It's just that. Which is is fine. It's fine uh, as it stands, but it's uninteresting to read about, unfortunately. Overall, while I while I still appreciate uh, Elizabeth's uh, I, Elizabeth's ideas for aesthetics and how she is able to uh, translate them. Into you know in her narrative, and I'm pretty sure that uh, some of her readership will appreciate the push and pull of the uh, emotional narrative. This book, unfortunately, uh, fails at every aspect where it's uh, where it's supposed to uh, stand out from the rest of her bibliography. My final rating for *A Merry Christmas at the Castle* is a two out of five. And yeah, that was my review. Thank you for your attention. If you enjoyed it for whatever reason, please leave a like and maybe even share this video wherever you think other people will like it as well. If you have anything you'd like to comment, either on this review or on the uh, book itself, well, that's what the comment section is for. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then, please subscribe. And ideally also uh, click the bell or whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to keep you notified. My own book, Heir to the Empire Next Generation, is available at most major book retailers under a master link in the description down below, right past my social media links, which I also suggest you check out should you choose to do so. Until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair.